Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we are going to talk about putting your books up on Amazon and some things you should and shouldn't do, mainly shouldn't do, when that's going on. As well as some stuff about your email list. One thing you shouldn't do, and this came up because someone was asking me about it. Don't ever take your book down to then put it up again, okay? A lot of people think that if you unpublish your book, that when you hit publish, like a couple days later or something, that it's going to go back to that whole start of the 30-day cliff. And that's not really how that works. Um, I don't know the exact science behind it with the algorithm, but once your book's in there and has been up there, it really doesn't do a whole lot. Now, one of the reasons why people do this is because they're trying to get rid of bad reviews. Like, if they just get a lot of bad reviews, they, like, try to fix their manuscript, then, like, up re-upload it again. So now it's like a brand new book with no reviews. Well, it turns out Amazon is actually cracking down on this and banning people from the platform who continually break this rule. So the best thing to do, if someone leaves a bad review and you don't even have to do this but if you wanted to like i guess this is fine if somebody leaves you a bad review and says like there's some editing issues and all this other shit fix those you don't need to take your book down to fix the manuscript you could just re-upload a new manuscript fix the things that are wrong with it and re-upload it and if you want to like leave a comment on the like i seriously listen i would never recommend anyone engaging with someone who left a review on Amazon. It just, it never works out well. But this is an instance where I think it might show some goodwill. You would then go, hey, thank you so much for the constructive criticism. I fixed that. Um, I'm really glad you caught that because none of my editors did. Thank you so much. It's kind of just like, a, like letting them know that you're not a complete, total piece of shit. Okay. But you can change your cover, you can do all that stuff. I've taken my books down, redid the artwork, changed the title of the books, changed the author name on the books, and all this other shit to make them show who I am now kind of deal. But in doing that, I lost all my good reviews for those books, and that really pisses me off. But, you know, like, if they stick around, they'll stick around. And this is the other thing. Don't ever take your books down because, like, if they're not selling. Because the next time you put a book out, if you have good front matter and back matter that links to your other books and people like your new book, they will go get your older books. It's just how the Amazon wheel spins. It's just how it is. Okay? Okay. So you have to make sure, don't trust the reader is just gonna stumble upon your book. Go, oh yeah, I remember that book I read by so-and-so, that's great. You need to have like, as soon as the book's done, the next page that they see, like continue the adventure with blah, blah, blah. Or did you like this? Well, guess what? You're gonna love this and have a picture of the other book and a link to fucking get it, you know? Or your email sign up Oh, did you like this book? Well, guess what? There's another book in this series, and I'm going to give it to you for free for signing up with my mailing list, clicking this link right here. You have to be constantly giving people stuff to do. Call to actions, okay? You need to have them. They're called CTAs and call to actions for a reason because they fucking work. So lots of people in all sorts of business use CTAs to let their customer base know what the next step for them to do is okay so don't take your books down leave them up if you need to fix stuff do that and you can put like it when you're doing your amazon thing it, it'll ask what edition the book is so you can update the edition number and all this other shit if you need to do that okay if your book is just not selling at all i would suggest maybe work on a new cover maybe a subtitle but your subtitle has to also be on the cover of the book at least that's what the rule was last time i checked on that but whatever anyway this is going to take us into the next step of the question that i was asked and this is about mailing lists if anyone ever gives you advice 
on how to purge your mailing list. Don't listen to them, okay? Because a lot of people over the years have come up with like different ideas and ways like, oh, you know what? This is a way to make your mailing list really go. You know, like do this, do that, do this. You know, maybe like get rid of everyone who signed up for your mailing list um, between this year and this year because you just want new, fresh, like all that shit's bullshit. Don't ever do anything like that. When you are purging a mailing list, the only thing that you should be looking for is each individual's open rate, okay? You could do this a couple different ways. Most email service providers, like not Gmail, but like MailChimp or MailerLite or Constant Contact or AdWeber or any of these fucking places, ConvertKit, you can click on the people in your mailing list and see how often they open your emails. If you have people who are never opening your emails, you should probably get them off your list because that hurts your open rate, okay? So instead of having like a 50% open rate, you might have like a 27% open rate. What that does somehow or another, I don't know how this actually works, but like places like Gmail will go, oh, this person's sending out a ton of emails right now and only this many are getting open. I don't know exactly how that works, but that's a thing. The other thing is when you're trying to get people to do deals with you, so say you want to um, work with another author and go, hey, can we like trade mailing lists kind of thing? Like I'll promote your book on mine and you promote my book on yours. And then to like sweeten the pot, you can say like, look, I have like a 50% open rate and a 30% click through rate, which wouldn't happen. Like that's just crazy, but let's just say. So if you can get, cause like you can have a mailing list of like 2000 people, but if your open rate is like 7%, that's kind of garbage, especially if your click-through rates rates only one or to two percent. You want to have a high open rate because that means people are excited to hear what you have to say. If your open rates really shit, it means your headings are bad for your emails, and the body of your emails need a lot of work because you are not keeping people engaged. Okay. Well, I would say the click-through rate means inside the body is kind of shit. But the open rate is really based on the um, subject line of the email. So you need to work on that. But so now that you got rid of people who never open your emails, the next thing to do is go through and find out how many people have only opened like one or two. And most places have like a rating system or a star system or like a percentage system or something like that to tell you who the people are and you could probably click the rating bit um, from high to low and it'll show you who these people are now what you can do is send a special email to those people particularly that just says like in the subject line you still interested with like a emoji or something like that and then in the body say hey i noticed that you don't really open a lot of my emails um, if you don't respond to this email, I'll assume that you want to be unsubscribed from my mailing list. And if you do, um, respond, great. I can't wait to show you all the new stuff that I have coming up and all the useful information I can give you over the next couple months, something like that. And then what you're going to do with this is the people who don't respond, scrub those off your mailing list too. And all this is going to do, it's going to increase your open rate and it's going to increase your click-through rate. Okay? Do that and just seriously do not listen to anyone who is telling you to make major changes to your mailing list. It's not worth it. And the other thing too, if the person telling you to do crazy things to your mailing list has like social media following of like thousands of people and has... Um, like a mailing list of thousands of people, don't fucking listen to anything they say because they have a huge audience. And what works for their giant audience is probably not gonna work for you with the small audience that's growing, okay? It's a completely different fucking thing. Just, just trying to look out for you guys here, okay? That's what you do with Amazon. That's what you do with your mailing list. 
I hope this was helpful. If you have any other questions about this kind of shit, leave them down below or send me an email. I hate all gmail.com. Okay. My books are on Etsy. Books are on Amazon. Go get those things. All right. Tie bar, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.